Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Chen Xuan from uh, Chongqing University, China, and it is my great honor to be a part of this uh, wonderful conference. And here I would like to thank Professor Haas for his kind of recommendation. Uh, in uh, recent years, our research uh, mainly focuses on the physical layer transmission of Li Fi systems, uh, especially the uh, underwater Li Fi systems. So the title of my uh, today's presentation is Systems. AI ML augmented U Li Fi. Here, uh, U Li Fi denotes the underwater Li Fi. So, in my uh, presentation, I will first uh, briefly introduce uh, underwater Li Fi, and then I will uh, focus on the two uh, key uh, issues of underwater Li Fi systems, uh, which are the reliability and also the band limitation. For the reliability of uh, uh, underwater Li Fi systems, uh, we will consider to use a uh, flexible uh, index modulation. And then and we will consider to uh, perform the uh, deep learning uh, based uh, recognition to enhance the reliability of uh, underwater Li Fi systems. And uh, for the issue of uh, band limitation, uh, we will consider a novel uh, modulation technique to substantially extend the usable bandwidth of the and the limited life uh, underwater Li Fi systems, and therefore we can uh, improve the achievable data rate of the system. So, when we talk about uh, underwater Li Fi, people always want to ask why do we need a, a Li Fi in the underwater environment? As we already have like acoustic underwater uh, communication and also the radio frequency based underwater uh, communication. So, in my opinion, the answer to this question. Uh, can be uh, in the following two aspects. Uh, on the one hand, as we know, the two third of the Earth's surface is covered with water. So uh, more and more uh, underwater activities have been carried out in recent years, such as uh, the environmental monitoring, energy exploration, and also the underwater culture. So we have uh, more and more uh, unmanned on underwater vehicles, submarines, and also divers, you know, which are working in the underwater environments. However, the underwater environments are very complex and uh, dynamic, which face many uh, critical general conditions, such as the water turbidity, the wave, and also the air bubbles. So in order to uh, efficiently support the various underwater activities, uh, reliable uh, high-speed and low-latency communication is uh, is very important in the on, in a dynamic underwater environments. However, uh, on the other hand, as we know, the acoustic and the radio frequency underwater communication systems cannot support high speed uh, underwater data transmission because of the uh, limited uh, spectral resources. However, the light wave spectrum uh, is abundant, which is also unregulated and uh, license free. So by fully exploring exploiting the light wave spectrum to enable underwater Li Fi, we can overcome the spectrum crisis in the underwater environments. Moreover, it has been I widely recognized that the blue and the green wavelengths are the transparent window in the typical underwater environments, so which can have a relatively low trans transmission att attenuation through the underwater channels. So. Uh, it is very promising to uh, to apply Li Fi technology in the underwater environments because of its uh, sufficient spectrum resources and the low transmission attenuation. So here is a brief comparison of different underwater wireless communication technologies. Uh, compared with the acoustic and IF counterparts, uh, underwater Li Fi has uh, many advantages such as uh, it, it can reach a uh, arch high data rate, which can can be up to a gigabit per second, uh, which also has a relatively low latency, which can uh, transmit for a moderate long distance, and which it can use low cost and small transceivers. Uh, also, it, it also enjoys uh, inherent uh, physical layer security, which is also very, also very important in underwater uh, environments. So uh, as we know, in practical underwater environments, the underwater channel uh, can be very complex and uh, dynamic. 
Therefore, a reliable communication technique should be uh, designed for the underwater uh, Wi-Fi communication systems. So to enable a reliable under, underwater Wi-Fi communication, we propose to use a flexible index modulation. Uh, more specifically, uh, we consider to apply a flexible OFDM with index modulation uh, for dynamic underwater Wi-Fi channels. Also, we further consider to uh, apply deep learning aided modulation recognition to further enhance the reliability of the uh, underwater Wi-Fi communication system, because in some uh, situations, the receivers might not know the exact information about the modulation technique. So for the uh, OFDM index modulation techniques, many uh, includes two uh, parts. One is the one is the single mode uh, index modulation. So in this case, uh, only a part of the subcarriers uh, are selected for the transmission of constellation symbols, and the selection of the index can also transmit additional uh, bits. And take uh, by taking a uh, subblock of length four and uh, the selection of two subcarriers for uh, signal transmission, we can have this kind of uh, mapping table. And as we can see, the spectral efficiency of a uh, single mode index modulation is given by this equation. Here, this part is contributed by the selection of the uh, the index, and this part is contributed by the uh, transmission of constellation symbols. Uh, to further uh, in improve the spectral efficiency of the OFDM uh, index modulation, um, researchers uh, have uh, further proposed a dual mode index modulation technique. Here, all the subcarriers can be used for the transmission of constellation symbols. And uh, here is a, the mapping table of a typical OFDM dual mode index modulation scheme. As we can see, all the subcarriers can be used to transmit constellation symbols. And the two set of distinguishable uh, constellation symbols are designed to uh, to transmit additional index information. And uh, for the dual mode index modulation case, the uh, spectral efficiency can be improved because all the subcarriers can be used for transmission of constellation symbols. So as a, a conclusion, we can see that the single mode index modulation ha has a low spectral efficiency, but the power efficiency is relatively high. So it is suitable for the application in the low SNR scenarios. Uh, for the dual mode index modulation scheme, it has a relatively high spectral efficiency, but the power efficiency might be low. So it is more suitable for the high SNR applications. And uh, these are two of our recent works about OFDM with index modulation for uh, underwater Wi Fi systems. First one is the uh, OFDM with quadrature index modulation, which means we perform index modulation uh, with, re with respect to both the in phase and the quadru quadrature phase components. So we can double the number of bits that can be uh, transmitted uh, by index selection. And we, we also perform the DFT spreading to reduce the, the PAPR of the OFDM signal. As we can see, for the OFDM with quadrature index modulation, the DFT spreading can achieve a much more significant performance uh, improvement. We also evaluated the bit area performance. Uh, as we can see, by performing DFT spreading, we can use a much larger uh, input voltage. So we can see that uh, DFT spreading can uh, enhance the tolerance of AOD nonlinearity for the, for the system. And the other work is that for the implementation of dual mode index modulation, we need to design two uh, distinguishable uh, sub constellations. So we take eight array constellation as example, including 8QAM, 8PSK, and also a spatial shape 7 one qam So we propose an interleaving-based uh, constellation partitioning approach to 
obtain two constellations such as uh, A and B. So uh, we also conduct experiments to evaluate the performance. As you can see, the system uh, suffers from LED nonlinearity, also which is also band limited. So we can obtain a similar uh, result as, as this case. So our conclusion is that uh, by using the proposed constellation design approach uh, with the a spatial shape seven one quam constellation, and also by using DFT spreading, we can obtain the best uh, BR performance. So as I just mentioned, in the underwater environment, the receivers might not be able to know the exact information of the in the modulation. And, and so we might uh, design a deep learning aided uh, recognition uh, regarding the constellation and also the index information. So here we consider um, six different uh, constellations and the four different uh, index uh, values. So we have 24 combinations of the constellation and the index uh, information. And then we apply the so-called swing transformer as the classifier. We perform the recognition of all these uh, combinations. And we can see for conventional CMM-based approach, uh, the recognition accuracy is relatively low when the received SNR is low. However, if we apply the swing transformer together with transfer learning, we can obtain uh, a sig significantly high as, uh, accuracy even when the received SNR is, uh, is relatively low. And the, the reason is that when we, we, here we apply the transfer learning by transferring the weights for, from the swing transformer by using the popular Im ImageNet database. So by using this, uh, these weights uh, in our, uh, during our uh, offline training stage, we can obtain a substantial performance improvement compared with the, uh, the swing transformer without transfer learning. Okay, so this is our uh, first work. And also uh, for the, Bandwidth limitation issue, as we know, uh, both the transmitters and the receivers of the uh, underwater Li Fi systems are band limited, such as the LEDs, the L LDs, and the uh, photo detectors. The band limitation will greatly limit the achievable data rate of practical underwater Li Fi systems. So, in order to fully utilize the bandwidth of band limited uh, low pass underwater Li Fi systems, and uh, greatly extend the useful bandwidth, even in the deep uh, fading region, we propose to use a uh, so-called uh, subcarrier number modulation added OFDM. We use this modulation technique to uh, extend the, modul uh, the usable bandwidth of the system. Here, we also consider a low pass aware subcarrier selection and, uh, and uh, together with uh, the sub block interleaving. So this figure shows the principle of the transmitter and the receiver of the OFDM SMM uh, scheme. Here we uh, perform joint number and the constellation mapping and the demapping to avoid the error propagation issue. So by taking n equals four, which means the subblock length is four, and uh, we select three different uh, numbers as uh, zero, one, and two. With a uh, four array constellation, we can have this uh, mapping table. So, uh, the the principle of the so-called low pass uh, subcarrier selection can be uh, found from this figure. For for this uh, first sub block, because of the low pass nature, we we select uh, if if we we if we want to select the two subcarriers from the four subcarriers in the sub block we naturally select the two subcarriers within the low frequency region, which will suffer from less uh, low pass effect. Um, however, because uh, different sub blocks are distributed across the entire frequency band. So for the sub block in the high frequency region, although 
the first two subcarriers are selected because the overall sub sub block is in the uh, deep fading region. So the selected two subcarriers also suffer from uh, very uh, significant power attenuation. However, here we propose to perform sub block interleaving. So the trans so after uh, interleaving the transmitted spectrum is like this. Then at the at the receiver side, uh, all the uh, selected subcarriers are uh, distributed in the low frequency region. So uh, we can say we can say that sub block interleaving can efficiently address the low pass effect. For the case with n equals four and k belongs to zero, one and two, we can say this scheme can double the usable bandwidth because uh, because only because the the data subcarriers only occupy half of the uh, signal bandwidth, and uh, we first perform a point to point on the water life experiment. Here we use uh, a big cell uh, with uh, over a two meter water tank, and we can see the uh, experimental system is uh, band limited with a three dB bandwidth of about uh, one gigahertz. And these are the received spectrum for the conventional uh, distributed for the conventional uh, signal without its leaving. The sub blocks are distributed across the uh, overall uh, bandwidth. So for each uh, sub block, we can see because the only the first uh, a few sub carriers are selected. So it is like this. But uh, but uh, all but there are also sub blocks uh, in the uh, Deep fading region. However, if we apply interleaving, subblock interleaving, then all the activated subcarriers will be located in the low frequency low frequency region, which will uh, suffer less from the low pass effect. And these are our uh, bit area performance. Uh, for conventional schemes, we can only use a bandwidth of uh, 1.4 gigahertz. However, if we apply our proposed interleaved OFDN with sub non subcarrier number modulation, the usable bandwidth can be extended to 2.6 gigahertz, which is corresponding to a data rate improvement of more than 80%. And we further perform a, a hybrid wavelength division multiplex and the polarization multiplexing uh, on the water life experiments. Here we consider uh, three different wavelengths and uh, over each wavelength we perform uh, polarization multiplexing, which means we can have totally uh, six parallel uh, channels to transmit the, the OFDM with uh, interleaved subcurrent number modulation. And these are the uh, response and the SNRs of the, of the experimental system. And these are the uh, BR performance. As we can see, the BR performance are uh, 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 comparable for different wavelength channels, which is because of the the the, the APDs we use, which is uh, which is actually this is the the, the APD we use, and the overall system bandwidth actually is limited by the receiver by the APD, not the the LEDs the LEDs. So all the wavelength channels have a comparable uh, BR performance. Here is a comparison of the uh, different modulation schemes. Uh, so for con conventional OFDM schemes, uh, we can use a bandwidth of only 1.4 gigahertz. However, if we apply uh, our proposed uh, scheme, the usable bandwidth can be up to 2.5 gigahertz, which is uh, corresponding to a 78% uh, bandwidth extension. And for the achievable data rate, uh, Conventional OFDM can achieve uh, 16.8 gigabit per second. However, uh, our proposed scheme can obtain uh, 22.5 gigabit per second, which is uh, corresponding to a data rate improvement of uh, more than 30%. Okay, uh, so in, in my speech, I have uh, briefly introduced the uh, underwater Li Fi and then we Consider the reliability and also the band limitation issue on the water life systems and propose the corresponding solutions. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your listening.